Hey guys, and welcome to subtopic 4.2 in water. We're going to first consider these science understandings. Water from different sources is treated with different methods depending on its origin and intended use. Suspended matter is commonly removed from water by flocculation followed by sedimentation and filtration. The surface of fine silica and aluminosilica particles in clays is negatively charged and can be flocculated into larger particles by the addition of salts containing highly charged cations such as aluminium ions or polymers. From that, you'll need to be able to explain the use of aluminium ions and polymers in flocculating clay particles suspended in water. To touch on that first understanding, the way in which water is treated to ensure it's safe for human consumption or use primarily depends on the source of the water and its intended use. If we look at water, we can break it up into fresh water and seawater. For fresh water, we use the following treatments in this order. The ones we're going to focus on are in bold here, so flocculation, sedimentation, filtration, and disinfection. In terms of seawater, then generally the processes we refer to them as desalination, and this can consist of either reverse osmosis or thermal distillation. From this image here, you can see the various treatments that fresh water undergo in order to ensure its safety for human consumption and use. So starting off here with coagulation and flocculation, that's what we're going to talk about next. One concern with fresh water sources is the presence of clay particles, because clays can typically make water turbid or cloudy. Clay particles are typically substances that are made up of silicates or aluminosilicates. This is something that we'll focus on in the next subtopic on 4.3 soils. Because clay particles are small and highly negatively charged, they repel one another and they stay suspended in water. So this gives the appearance of uh, cloudy or turbid water. A method to remove these clay particles is coagulation and flocculation. Coagulation involves the neutralization of the charge on the surface of clay particles. Because it's highly negatively charged, we would need something that is highly positively charged to help balance out and neutralize that charge. Aluminium ions are typically used to neutralize this charge because they have a high charge density. Upon neutralization of this negative charge, this then allows for the attraction of clay particles with one another. So the aggregation of the clay particles to form larger particles, what we call flocks, is called flocculation. So we can see that this clay particle with its negative charge is surrounded by aluminium ions of high positive charge. They can now associate with one another to form a much bigger component called a flock. These flocks then can settle as sediment due to their size. After coagulation and flocculation, there is a, an additional filtration process that typically is used try and remove any other remaining solid impurities. So typically the water is flowed through layers of sand and charcoal which help to trap these impurities. Instead of using aluminium ions and aluminium based salts, we can use polymers to help encourage flocculation as well. So polymers are typically of large molecular mass. They can be either positively or negatively charged and this can allow for the coagulation, for the neutralization of the charge of these clay particles. And they can also act to help trap or encapsulate the clay particles to form these larger flocks, which then can be removed or can settle due to gravity. In this diagram here, we can see uh, clay particles with their negative charge. We can see here a polymer with a highly positive charge. So this can cause attraction and neutralize the negative charges on the clay particles. And because you have these binding sites here, this can allow for the clay particles to remain trapped within. And upon becoming neutral, you can get the formation of intermolecular forces between these components. They can then aggregate and clump together to form these flocks. And then the clays can be removed from the water. For the next science understanding, Hard water contains high concentrations of calcium and magnesium ions. Hard water renders soaps less effective and causes buildup of precipitates. As well as natural and modified zeolites can be used in the purification and softening of water through the exchange of cations. And we need to be able to explain the use of zeolites in water softeners. 
So I'm hoping that if you are asked in a test or an exam what hard water is, that you don't give this response, because we know it's got to do with the presence of calcium and magnesium ions. If we consider water hardness in Australia, what we can see is that each state can have differing levels of water hardness, but of particular note is South Australia, as well as Queensland, we essentially have the hardest water within the nation. That can be represented by this value here, so TDS, which stands for Total Dissolved Salts. Adelaide has 245 parts per million of these total dissolved salts. Um, Brisbane in Queensland with 270 parts per million, much greater than most parts around the nation. Just to reiterate, hard water can be defined as water with a high concentration of calcium and or magnesium ions. This table below helps us classify the degree of hardness of the water. So hard water typically containing between 121 to 180 milligrams of dissolved minerals per litre. One of the major problems of hard water is that it can render soaps less effective. We know this occurs because calcium and magnesium ions react with soap ions and they form an insoluble precipitate, which is what we call soap scum. Some examples of how these precipitates can form, and this does link into some work that we've done back in stage one chemistry. We can see here the formula of a soap ion. It can react with calcium ions and produce a solid salt or a precipitate. Um, magnesium likewise can do the same thing, so it doesn't really matter what your soap is, it's going to be able to form that precipitate there. We can associate soap scum as this insoluble white precipitate. So if we think about source of water and where we normally use water, we can think around the bathrooms, around taps, in showers, in laundry, and we might notice this buildup of white precipitate there. Another problem with hard water is that it can also cause the buildup of limescale, which is calcium carbonate. Limescale forms because the calcium ions in hard water can react with hydrogen or bicarbonate ions in water and produce calcium carbonate solid, uh, as well as carbon dioxide and water. So this forms an insoluble precipitate itself. This limescale can deposit onto kitchen appliances, onto bathroom surfaces, pipes and drains. We can see limescale build up on a heating element here, which could be in a kettle. And we can see limescale deposits within some piping here. To help combat the issue of hard water, we can use substances called zeolites. Zeolites are synthetic or naturally occurring hydrated aluminosilicates. Like clays, which are silicates or aluminosilicates, zeolites are highly negatively charged. What this allows for is the adsorption of cations on the surface of this zeolite. Another feature of zeolites is that they contain an open, porous structure. This provides a large surface area for cation exchange to occur. So in essence, zeolites are going to help by allowing cations to exchange. So those calcium and magnesium ions in hard water to be replaced by something that will help soften it. And because of that, we can classify zeolites as water softeners. Here you can see an outline of the structure of a zeolite. What we can do is overlay this with the actual arrangement of atoms within a zeolite. And so what you can see here is that sort of open porous structure, which can allow for water as well as ions dissolved in it to flow quite readily through its structure. So one way of looking at how zeolites help to soften water is by considering this zeolite here. So it's highly negatively charged surface allows for the binding of sodium ions onto the surface through adsorption. The addition of hard water with calcium or magnesium ions essentially allows for the exchange of calcium ions within the water with sodium ions that are adsorbed onto the surface of the zeolite. Because sodium ions have a one positive charge and calcium has a two positive charge, we can think that for every one calcium ion that gets uh, adsorbed onto the zeolite, that two sodium ions can then go into solution in the water, and that will help remove those ions in hard water. To summarize, zeolites can exchange calcium and magnesium ions in hard water for sodium ions bound to its structure. It's important to note that this is an equilibrium process. 
we can represent this equilibrium process shown below here. So we have sodium ions bound to the zeolite structure, calcium ions in solution existing in equilibrium with sodium ions in solution and calcium ions attached to the zeolite, and likewise for magnesium ions in solution and adsorbed to the zeolite. When we flush hard water through our zeolite, we essentially end up with an increase in the concentration of these calcium and magnesium ions. Given that's an equilibrium process, the equilibrium will want to shift to help counteract this increase. And as a result, we can say that the equilibrium will shift to the right to help decrease the concentration of these ions, which then allows for these ions to adsorb to the surface of the zeolite but at the same time allow for the removal of sodium ions into solution. So this will help soften the water. Over time, you can expect that your zeolite will become used up, so there won't be any more sodium ions to exchange for calcium and magnesium. But what you can do is regenerate your zeolite by essentially passing through a concentrated solution of sodium chloride and that would act to essentially reverse the equilibrium process and shift equilibrium to the left. So that concludes the first part of 4.2 Water. I'll see you guys in the next video.